Yes. You can back yes. up in a minute. I had to slap her around <laughs> real quick. And it is um, the second edition of Don't Believe the Hype on this very fine Tuesday, June 18th, a day before Juneteenth, which is tomorrow, mm. um, which is, you know, the um, Juneteenth, not June 19th, is the day that all black people uh, in America were free, Supposedly. per se, right? So anyway, what are we talking about today, you ask? Yes. I wasn't even going to talk about anything, to be honest with you. I'm just going to keep And she it. wasn't. And then, I when, wasn't. And then when she got wind of this subject, her notes, she had to write notes. Yeah, I'm scrolling, looking on the phone, and then I see um, LeVar Ball is back in the news. Who is LeVar Ball? LeVar Ball is uh, the father of, who is it, Alonzo, Alonzo Ball, Angelo, Laker. and LaMelo yeah. Ball. Alonzo, uh, who just got traded from the Lakers to uh, the, Pelicans. The, the Pelicans. I didn't even know no damn New team Orleans. was called the mm. Pelicans until I heard about that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <laughs> so he's got these sons who are some would consider basketball phenoms, if you will. No, but go Well, ahead. some of them are. I don't know. No. So anyway, Trust LeVar me, no. Ball being a, a black man, very outspoken, always edifies his kids. You're the greatest. They're this, they're that, which he should be doing. So yes. big ups to him. So he was on, I guess, yesterday, um, first take with Stephen A. Smith and Matt, Max Gellerman and Molly uh, Quirin, I think that's how you say her last name. She is um, the girlfriend or wife, I guess it is, wife of Jalen Rose. Mm -hmm. So she, Notice she's not a sister, brothers. She's not a sister. She looks like she's a white girl. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think she's a white girl. But anyway, so LeVar and, uh, is sitting in between Max and Stephen A. Smith and... I don't know where Molly is. She's somewhere else. And so she's at wants to um, ask LeVar a question. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead LeVar, before I, I get back to him. LeVar, can I switch gears with you? for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. <laughs> Let's stay oh focused Lord. here. All right. Um, can you please explain to me what the big... And she says something like, I want to switch, switch gears right, or switch something gears. like that. Mm -hmm. And he says, you can switch anytime. anytime. So... But the headline says basically that LeVar Ball says something uh, inappropriate right. to her and this, that, and that. So I clicked on it. was TMZ. I clicked on the article, and I'm thinking, wow, he maybe he cussed her out or right. he said something crazy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in this article, it's saying that ESPN is sticking behind her, and, you know, Jalen um, wishes that uh, LeVar would have apologized. Weren't they uh, in different studios or something? Yeah. So, so how... <sighs> But, so, okay, so I click on the actual video to see what had happened. Did he say I will touch your titties? I mean, what happened? And he literally said from the video I saw, after she says, I want to switch gears, and he says, he leans in a little bit, says, you can switch in, um, you can switch anytime. And it was really sort of like what I said. It wasn't like, hey, girl, shoot, you can come <laughs> switch with me anytime. Wasn't even nothing close to that. So Donovan and I watched it a few times to see if we can see. Okay. Like, over and over again. And did I didn't we miss something? I didn't see anything. Confused. I, I was confused. And so then TMZ catches up with Molly. And they're asking her, well, what did you think? Um, do you think he should apologize? Because now they're wanting him to apologize, him being LaFar. And she's like, well... You know, um, I don't want him to get in trouble. I don't think ESPN should, you know, discontinue having him on there. But, you know, an apology would have been nice. And I'm like, apologize for what? What did this man do? And so then it dawned on me, okay. First of all, a lot of people don't like LeVar. Right. A lot of people being, let's say, a lot of white people who especially are not, and some black people in all fairness, a lot of white people who are not used to seeing a black man be as assertive, assertive as LeVar Ball. They're used to black men, um, as some would say, the tap dancing for butter biscuits mm -hmm. or very docile and not, you know, outspoken as much. Just like, getting mine and going about my business. And it's funny because those same people who have a problem with LeVar Ball don't have a problem with a loud mouth like Stephen A. Smith. Because mm -hmm. that dude has got a loud mouth. And for the most part, he's always cool. siding on he's the... Always cool. Right, you said it. He's always, um, cool. he's always siding on the side of white. Mm -hmm. You know, and very loud and very boisterous. He says something... I'm Stephen A. Smith. I've never played basketball in my life. And he's just as loud as LeVar. But whenever mm -hmm. LeVar talks about his sons being the greatest and this, that, and the other, and they're going to do A, B, C, and D, mm -hmm. and oh, well, you know, he, he's a loud mouth, and he's always talking this, that, and the other, and I'm like... So I get it. I 
see what this is. This is nothing more than a hit. This, I'm like, y'all couldn't have found nothing stronger. Y'all could try to find nothing stronger to build in there. Because even the, the guy who was um, doing the interviewing from TMZ, because mm -hmm. she was walking to her car, he was saying, are you um, shocked that ESPN still has uh, uh, someone like LeVar, loud mouth like him, um, to uh, continue to come on the show? And so when he said that, right there, it, they already had this preconceived or this ideology about LeVar that he's a loud mouth. Is he loud? Yes. But is he saying some good things? Yes. Some of it is kind of comical, kind of funny, because right before they traded Lonzo, he was saying, oh, he won all three of his sons. They were all mm -hmm. going to play for the Lakers, this, that, and the other. And then maybe a day or so later, they, they ended up trading him. And so that's kind of funny. You know, he's, he, he said some funny things, like funny comical. But for the most part, he's a black dad that edifies and speaks life into his children. children. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think people are used to seeing that. Because even if you go back to a lot of the other interviews, you hear people saying, uh, oh, his kids are scared of him. Oh, they're in fear of him. And it's like, no, they're not in fear of him. They have respect for their dad. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then we know culturally speaking, a lot of other cultures, or races rather, they're a little bit more liberal with their kids. Their kids, you know, tend to run roughshod all over them mm -hmm. and don't have any respect. And not so, mine. Right. But so when you see a black father, you know, actually being able to command what goes on in the lives of some of his adult children, it's like, oh, well, they should be able to speak for himself. The same thing, not to venture off, because I'm going to get back to this, but the same thing for um, Kevin Durant. His mama always, him and his mom always get a lot of heat. Why does his mom need to be there? Mm -hmm. Why is his mom in the boardroom? Why is his mom making all decisions? Well, his mom is his manager, and she does those type of things. But as I said before, when the white athletes' parents, like the Peyton, mm -hmm. you know, um, not Peyton, Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, when their father, you know, he's very instrumental in, that, in the lives of their, his sons, nobody says, well, why is he saying this and doing that? And mm -hmm. they just, hey, yeah, it's great. They go right along with it. But here you have these black athletes who have parents in their lives. It's a problem. And so... When I saw this repeatedly with Molly Quirin, Molly Quirin and LeVar Ball, this whole little thing that really is uh, much to, uh, to do about nothing, if you will, if mm -hmm. I said that right, um, it's really just another attack on black men. Right. And that's and, all it is, and, to make another issue. Yeah, and, and it's kind of, to me, it's kind of funny how, um, okay, his son gets traded, and all of a sudden it's like they're trying to kick him out as, he's, as they're leaving town. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. Right, and so here you have them, uh, and then I guess ESPN condemned LeVar. And I'm like, for what? What did you condemn him for? What, like, what did he, like, you got, I say this much, and let me go on to my mm. other part, okay? So the other part I want to talk about is Kuba Gooding Jr. You guys know him, a lot of people know him as radio, but you also know him in um, Jerry Maguire. Show me the money! Yeah, show me the money. So a lot of people, you guys know him in that, and um, a lot of other roles that he's played. The Boys in the Hood, um, mm -hmm. most famously, that comes to mind for me. Mm -hmm. um, so, as you guys know, he was in a bar about a week ago or whatever it was, and a white girl said that she reached, oh, he reached over and touched her leg and touched her breast. Okay? So, allegedly. That's, that's what I'm saying. She said. Yeah. Allegedly, she, uh, he did these things, and so he gets a, he turns himself in and gets arrested. They do the perp walk with him and all this other stuff. And then some other white girls came out, because, you know, Cooper loved the white girls. Mm -hmm. You know, not saying that he did any of this, but he does. He's married to a white woman, at least he was. Um, and so there's been like two or three other white girls that come out and said that he's touched them. One girl said at the time she was 16, um, they were at a club or something, and he stuck his finger up her butt. And that was 10 years ago. What's wrong with that? When she was 16. Oh, yeah. But... Yeah, so, but this is 10 years ago, she's saying, um, if you ask me, I think it's all BS, but I think there's a moral to the story here. Okay. And the moral of the story is, you brothers need to be more cognizant of who you're dealing with. Now, I don't have 
anything to say about LeVar because I don't think he did anything. I don't think he walked into that. I don't think it was a Freudian slip of the tongue. I don't no, think it was, it was any a of simple that. response. A simple response. Now, and I, I, another reason why I would give LeVar a pass was for, well, you know, he's married to a white woman, so maybe he needs to get into I don't know how. <laughs> but the point that I'm making is he even said, remember it was a year ago on um, uh, uh, Colin Cowher. He has that show. Mm -hmm. Right. Speak for yourself, and the um, I can't remember the white girl's name, but anyway, she said something to him, and Lavar pretty much put her in check, said stay in your lane, mm -hmm. and he she said something like, oh, I feel threatened. Are you threatening me? He says you're scaring me right now. Stop talking to me. Whoa. Because what he was saying was, I see what you're trying to do, but it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna trip this black man up into. You know, making everybody else think I was trying to do something mm -hmm. to him. I'm threatening this white woman. And a lot of people got mad and took offense to that. Mm -hmm. um, Charlamagne the God um, so beautifully said, you know, you're weaponizing your whiteness against this dude. That's what, <laughs> that's what she was doing. Right. You know, oh, 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 I'm just down to the stress. You're going to do mm -hmm. something to me. It didn't work, okay? And so, but for Cuba, Cuba, some people say Cuba, mm -hmm. whatever you want to say it. Um. You need to stop playing with white girls. I mean, I know his girlfriend is a white girl, whatever, you know, but why is that all these white women? Now, nah, they, they, I don't know what, because I tend to think, well, what did Cuba do? Right. What did he do in order to get this Me Too moment for himself? You know, because the Me Too moment had kind of died out mm -hmm. a little bit, but now he's bringing it back. Right, right, right. And so now you have all these other white women coming out the woodwork saying he did this to him, he did that mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. And I kind of liken somebody like Cuba to like an OJ. Because like when you going to learn? Right. When, when are you going to get it? Maybe this is his aha moment. You know, like, oh. I get it now. Oh. Yes. Get it. This is what y'all been saying. Because all this time, I thought they really loved me. You know, I'm, you know, cool. I got all these, you know, the uh, Oscar nominations. Quick, and quick trivia. Cuba Gooding Jr. is famous in his own right. Uh -huh. But he is the son of. Uh, Cuba Gooding Sr. Yeah. Everybody he plays, plays the fool. Yes. Sometimes. Yes. Okay. Oh, there you are. Yeah, so that, that's his dad. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's just like, I, because we had this discussion on the show. So. We did. Who oh, you love, who you love. Yeah, I guess. But you need to use some wisdom. Wisdom. Use some wisdom. You can't love who Everybody, you love. Everybody, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, just, I, I don't want to say it's funny, like comical, but it's like, damn. Especially with this LeVar thing, like, y'all ain't even gonna try to hide the fact that y'all trying to trip a brother See, up. see and, and, and what kills me with a lot of these brothers, and I have experience, and you have experience having uh, siblings that have married uh, white women. White women. Um, if you're married, and you're out and about, why are you allegedly groping other women? Well, because if you see the video... He, his girlfriend is sitting in between him and the other lady who mm -hmm. alleged that he groped her. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that he does reach over, but you can't see exactly right. what he reached. And are, then are he they, could have went and said, hey, girl. Right. I mean, how do we know it's not a video fake? Um, I don't know. I mean, he, because he, she said something about, she said something to him about the movie Snow Dogs, which he mm -hmm. was in. And exactly. he said he remembers the comment, but he don't, he's flat out denies touching her breast. Which to me is kind of odd, like, okay, my woman is sitting right here mm -hmm. between us. And let's get into that freaky stuff, I don't know. Right. But what's the chances of him groping another woman's breast in yeah, front of his Yeah, wife? and and then, um, I, I gotta say this, I, I was watching a, a, a documentary on uh, Natalie Wood, for those that don't know who Natalie Wood mm -hmm. was, she was a little girl in uh, Miracle on 34th Street, the black and white version, and then she was also in, her greatest movie was Splendor in the Grass. With Warren Beatty. And uh, West Side Story. West Side Story, but her greatest one was mm -hmm. Wonder in the Grass. West Side Story. She was in a lot of great movies. Mm -hmm. um, James Dean. Mm -hmm. uh, that movie before he died. Yeah. Uh, Rebel Without a Cause. Mm -hmm. She was in that and stuff like that. And this woman was a. Uh, her and Rotten, she was married to Robert Wagner. And she died in a boating accident, of course, attributed to alcohol. A lot of these things are attributed to alcohol. You know who else was on that boat? Uh, Walken. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. And he doesn't even want to talk about it. He doesn't even want to talk about it because they think Robert Wagner is still a, sus a suspect of interest. He was, but... No, know, no, they, 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 they still have him as a suspect. He won't talk, though. Well, I, he, that he was, 
a suspect, but they kind of they have nothing going because nobody will talk. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They, so the clip, they, they reopen the case and they have them reclose yeah. it. Yeah. So anyway, but anyway. Um, these Hollywood people, they, they, I mean, okay, I'm 48. Mm -hmm. You're 28. Um, I don't think it's sexy to get sloppy drunk at my age. You know what I mean? If I was your age, I could probably do it, but... <laughs> You know what I mean? To where you're out of control of your faculties and stuff, or you, you're not sure what you're doing. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, yeah, a, some people call it alcoholism. You yeah, know, some yeah, people yeah. can't exactly. control exactly. their alcohol, but I mean, does it mean that the Cuba got drunk and Tasha could have been? I don't know. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, don't know. But I, I just say, especially for you brothers. I'm just saying that. Not you. Yeah, no, no but, but uh, with my point right there was. These brothers, you're in an environment. That's what I'm about to say. That you are not conducive Watch in, and they set up can be right. Watch your surroundings because you listen to smoke. <laughs> well, especially if you're a celebrity, right. you don't know everybody, but mm -hmm. everybody probably knows, knows you, and so you don't know who's looking for a come up. Like, why well, come out after ten years and say, "Oh, he stuck his finger up my, my butt." butt. I, if somebody stuck their finger in my butt, I'm hollering to the high heavens right and, there on the spot. And, and brothers out there listening, my brother. Uh, well, he doesn't where he's married now, again, uh, <laughs> to a black woman, thank God. But, um, again, this is the same playbook. Did, did they not use the same playbook on Bill Cosby? I, what did I say about black, or well, not black men, but just men in general? Yeah. Y'all dumb! <laughs> We're dumb. <laughs> dumb! Right. Y'all keep falling for it. Mm -hmm. You a celebrity, especially a black male celebrity, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be nowhere where a bunch of white women right. are. No shade to white women, mm -hmm. but you know you were target, especially if you get within the earshot of these women. Mm -hmm. You probably a suspect for something. Oh, with the way he looked at mm -hmm. me, I just felt threatened. You know, and even if it ain't true, it's a story out there, and most people gonna believe, it, especially most white mm -hmm. people. I mean, hell, look, OJ can't even get a Twitter account right. without them <laughs> exactly. getting mad. I mean, I've seen white people get <laughs> mad, mad about OJ having an account. Mm -hmm. Why does he have an account? Well, first of all, he was a Murder. Right. He went to jail on some stupid shit. No, nope, not we say he's guilty. Well, yeah, but he can't he, damn can he breathe? Nope, can't even have a life. Yeah, he been there. I mean, I've seen white people talking about oh I'm a, I'm deleting you because you think it's okay that he has a a, tw a, a Twitter account. Delete away. And I'm like, why don't y'all have that same energy with y'all ancestors who was raping and lynching and murdering? Oh no, no, stuff? no that's where the double standard comes in. I'm saying how where's that energy from? Y'all wanna hold OJ out of all the mm -hmm. black people on the planet. Y'all want to focus on OJ, but see, you know what? I ain't mad at him mm -hmm. because white people have solidarity in yeah. who they mad at. Right. We be mad if somebody come up in the church and mm -hmm. kill all our people, and we get I'm up and yeah, him. we forgive them. Yes. And oh gosh, I'm gonna pray for him. Oh, that he wants some chicken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, like I said, what's the difference between uh, OJ and uh, Polanski, Woody Allen? Or, or uh, 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 Harvey Weinstein. Or, or yeah, or Bill Cosby's a, a, a really good example. What's the difference between him and all of them? Right. You know, they getting win an Oscar. Wait, wait. Harvey Weinstein has yet to be charged. He's sitting at home. Yeah, they, they like slowly but surely yeah, quietly dropping charges. dropping charges. And he's paying people off. and Which is all those women wanted in the first place. Is Think about it. Most of the women mm -hmm. that complain mm -hmm. on him became a big time star. Right. Which is, everybody that's familiar with the cats and couch knows that's how it goes. I'm not saying he didn't do anything right. foul to women. I'm not, because I'm not mm -hmm. saying he didn't, I don't know. But everybody knows about the cats and couch, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get this role, you're going to be the big, your name's going to be in lights, and everybody's going to come see you. However, mm -hmm. I need you to do something for me. Right. And a lot of people that come to, come to Hollywood from Iowa, wherever you come from. Right. There's two Hollywoods. You don't make it in this one, you're most likely going to make it in that one. Exactly. You know, if you're willing to play. Right. And so, you know, if the cast and couch says, well, instead of going to that, the seedy Hollywood, let me go in and, you know, do what I got to do in mm -hmm. the, the, the good Hollywood, if you will, um, and so I can get that role. I mean, Dorothy Dandridge um, was famous for saying, uh, especially with the black, and see, nobody's coming to bat for the black um, actresses. Of course who not. Do work that kind. That was like the norm for them. You only knew that those black actresses, when they went into uh, interviews or uh, auditions, they, in the back of their mind, probably in the front yep. of their mind, knew, knew. I'm going to have to do something strange for this mammy role. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't talking about no leading stuff. 
talk because Dorothy Dandridge says she goes. It's funny how, and I'm paraphrasing, but you white boys talk about the Hollywood executives mm -hmm. expect for us black girls to Without. drop our panties, mm -hmm. even for the smallest of roles. Like, of you course. don't even try to, you're not even so with it. It just, it's an expectation. Right, right. So you mean to tell me Lena Horne might have... She, I don't know. I mean... Paul Bailey? It's possible. And, you know, a, a lot of them talk about those things. Mm -hmm. It was just that, either... Do those things, but don't get the part to be to play a mammy mm -hmm. or be a mammy in real life. life. Which one sounds more appealing to you? Mm. And so I just think that was a hate to say it, but it was part for the course thing. Right. You know, okay, I'm going to talk to Otto Preminger because you know mm -hmm. with Dor Dorothy Dandridge, the Otto Preminger ended up being a thing. Right. This is big time director. I'm gonna go see Otto Preminger. Let me put on the good draws because I know he probably. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to dish because I yeah. love Dorothy Dandridge. Yeah, you know. Lot. But yeah. I'm not trying to disrespect her or her legacy, but you probably only know that's what she was thinking. Yep. This ain't going to be no cut and dry mm -hmm. conversation. He going to want me to actually lay down and do whatever. Mm -hmm. So Devils. But back to, you know, you people like in Cuba Gooden Jr. I mean, dude, maybe this is his wake-up call. Maybe not. I don't think but so. But you got to be cognizant. Like, if I was, like we hear about all the time, the football player was about a year ago. He opens up the door to a bunch of white women. Right. And they said he would he, he beat her up. Or, the girl's know. underage. He's like, get the hell yeah, away and from me. Yeah, right. And she wigs out. And, but it's like, yeah, you, you just got to be on the defense or offense, both, mm -hmm. you know. And if you're in a, surrounded by that, you see that coming, go home. Right. Go home, go home, go home. But it's so hard because they've got those feminine wiles and it just... Well, what's so hard is you have to pay all these lawyers yeah. and publicists to try to keep your reputation intact. Because I don't care what you say, as a black man, once they put that stigma on you, you, it's going to stay on you till you die. And, and think about this, Jesse Smollett. Whatever little money he did have, he ain't got no more. Them lawyers are eating that shit. Uh, to keep him. But what Jesse Smollett the problem was, he thought he wasn't a white woman, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that he can do what white women well, do. Well, remember, he, he's the black Tupac. The gay Tupac. Yeah, okay. You see how well that worked for him. Yeah, so. Now, he um, should have said he was more or less like the, the uh, I don't know, whatever white woman is hot and popping right now. Because mm -hmm. that's he, the, the action that he took and the things he did was that of a white woman. Mm -hmm. You know, to try to get sympathy and it almost right. worked for almost two worked. seconds, mm -hmm. you know. But. Yeah, just be cognizant. And wow. so I want to transition to this other um, subject here. Okay. You along with a couple of your other homies, because I've seen this, and I actually reposted it, okay? Wait, 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 wait. Nah, you son. Wait, wait, you aren't nah. talking about that video, me and... Uh... Nah. Okay, good. Nah, good. I'm going to tell you exactly what you posted. Let that, me see. That, that, that was my greatest hits compilation. Let me try to find this, because... Uh, I mean, oh, Lord, it has to do with child support for those that are listening, and it is a true statement, and a lot of brothers feel that way. Unfortunately, <laughs> you sisters are dealing with these, these knuckleheads that are in and out of jail that ain't paying that kind of money, and you're bitter. Nah. But for those of us that do pay that kind of money, that's how we feel. Okay. The nonsense that went forth this morning that I saw a few times on my timeline okay. went like this. <clears throat> <clears throat> Child support should come on a card that only buys baby stuff. Okay. Not crab legs, fake hair, <laughs> weed, and Miami trips. That man's a genius. So what I said mm -hmm. was, okay, ain't man, none of y'all paying enough child support to send your baby mama to Miami. You ain't got a lot I of was. kids. I was. Now. But I had a good woman, so. I want to get off into it, because you know, you like to talk about child support, so here's, you got, yes, I'm you a, got a good 20 yes, minutes. Yes, yes, I'm a father's right ad, advocate, I, and, and right. I am too. Damn right. But I like to get down to the ridiculous. Yeah. Let's get to the fact. And fatness. dissect it, okay? Okay, let's go. Like, that's silliness. Can we agree that that's silly? No, it's not. Why is it not silly? Because it's the way a person feels. Person's feelings is not. It ain't so. a person, because like I said, I saw like right. six people. That, that's what I'm saying. I'm generalizing. If, if that's how a person feels, it's not so. Doesn't mean if they're right. Okay, let's just listen. Do you that think person. that most, on average, I because like they talk like they send a Jay Z money, Beyonce. I mean, uh, uh, most people are no right. I, I, I have so to it's just to hear that in some dude's mind, they think that the baby mom, and I'm not saying this stuff don't happen. 
Okay. But on average, y'all thinking, because you posted this mess, mm -hmm. I posted that it. women are going on buying weed, crab leg weed in Miami trips with some child support. I don't know nothing about that, but the generalization of it, I know a lot of young ladies that are taking the child support that they're getting from the state, whatever that free money is they get from the state that they and charge you know for the damn body. well they ain't getting Wait, that wait, no, 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 no. You look, the kid's snotty nose, white t-shirt, uh, pro kids, but she's got her nails done and a weave in her head. A weave is not cheap, and you know that. And she's not working, so you explain it to me. Do you think, because I'm not saying none of that is, you know, that's right. not true. Do you think a man is really, on average, on average. I ain't talking about these basketball-wise right. child support. Do you think on average a man is giving that kind of child support to a woman? Like, child support is to help her pay bills. Right. Okay? Child support, not her And support. she's not getting all the rent paid in most cases. I'm not saying mm -hmm. this at all, but in most cases, she's not getting all the rent paid, the car note, the electricity. It's to help yes. support the child. Yeah, the child should, should have on decent clothing and all that kind of stuff. But when I hear that, it's like, y'all get high on supply. Like, how much money is y'all sending? You ain't sending that kind of money. The connotation of, of that thing is basically saying this. Until you women start agreeing that child support should not be based on a man's income, it should be based on what the child needs. I mean, I, I guess, I, mean, I, I, never, I never got because, child support. Because think about it. If I'm 18 years old, I'm making $1,100 a month. And I got to pay half of that to my child, which I'm willing to do. Right. No problem. But now I'm starting to move up in the company. Now I get $1,500 a month. Now I got to pay $800 of it to the child. What's changed? Well, I'm not getting a raise. There's no incentive for me to do better. I thought you said you got you moved up in the company. I did, but oh. if you if you if, but if you get a raise too. I didn't get a raise. Well, I mean, depending on where you live, people know that, you know, the child support guidelines are different. So in mm -hmm. California, it's based upon the child's needs. A lot of times, people, um, can, or, or whoever has the child, it's not, not necessarily the mom, yeah, the custodial parent, they can take um, the other parent back for a modification. Hey, the child's mm -hmm. older to have, you know, more needs or doing more things, this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. need more money. And so... But why is it that the child... Uh, there's always an increase. There's never a decrease. Sometimes there is a decrease. If you go and modify it, if you say, hey, I'm not making the money I was making before, or, you know, uh, my standard of living is suffering, they, 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 a lot of times they do give men or the custodial parent mm -hmm. a decrease. I know for a fact that they do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people Very just rare. don't, but mm -hmm. a lot of people just don't know. And they like, I know a guy just recently, his baby mama, mm -hmm. I hate the term, but we're going to use yeah. it, uh, is on the system. Cause they just had a baby mm -hmm. they're not together mm -hmm. and i told him i said go to the da go to them first run please no go to them <laughs> go first ahead, yeah. before they come to you mm -hmm. oh yeah, 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 yeah you know a man came up to him a surgeon with an envelope with his picture on it yeah. and it's a summons for the, they didn't say they said we're gonna start getting garnishing your wait, wages yeah. but i'm like why wait until they come to you why not go to them well i can say this in my own situation. After my first situation with my oldest son, I learned and said, you know what, I'm going to be more responsible. I'm going to be more careful. And when me and, and uh, because of our careers, um, she got to stay someplace, I got to stay another place, uh, we decided to be fair and we stayed out of court. We stayed out of the court system. Because y'all had some sense. Together right. y'all had mm -hmm. some sense. But she made it fair. She didn't make it to where it was impossible for me. I mean, if you don't incentivize me to do better for myself, I'm not going to do You know, I'm going to quit. And my thing is this, too. This is where I put a, not a lot, but some of the blame on you guys. Yes. Because if you know that this woman is going off getting crab legs yeah. and your child's eating top ramen, mm -hmm. I'm not, because we know that yeah. stuff happens. It does happen. Why complain? Right. Go take her ass back to the right. man. Well, you know what I would do. And say, I don't mind paying child support. However, I do mind when my child is eating oodles and noodles while she's eating crab legs. Right, but it's kind of hard to do that when you can't take off of work every little... Excuses! No, no, it's not excuses. I'm, what I'm saying is, in some situations, you just let it go. It's just not worth it. But, uh, but then... Then y'all be the ones getting on Facebook talking about she going to Miami and crab legs with my little child support money. Mm -hmm. 
Or, or is she supporting her other man on your money? If you know that, take her back. Like, if I was a dude have, in that you, situation. You gotta have proof. And listen, I don't, like, I'm, I was where you were. Because I, I ended up having, well, I never paid. But they were garnishing, they being the state, was garnishing my wages for mm -hmm. child support. Because my daughter's father at the time lied and said I was absentee, which I wasn't. I was a custodial parent. And we ain't got on some aid because he had lost his job. I get my paycheck and it was short. And I had no clue as to why it was short. Right. Find out I'm getting garnished. Right, blindsided. I took me Yes, Mr. Moses, yes. It took yes. me over Yes, run for the year. good guys. I had to fight the system for a year. So even what we go through. And they gave me my money back, all the fifty dollars administrative fee. Yeah, of course they did. But you know, but but, but I, that's because I was there every other week, yes. sitting there saying I'm not letting this go because to right. me it wasn't about the money. It's and this the, is why I say you guys yes. make a lot of excuses. But to me it wasn't about the money. It's the principality. No, it wasn't that. I didn't want them to label me as an absentee parent right. because I wasn't an absentee parent. I, you know, was taking care of my daughter a hundred and ten percent. Going and busting my ass at work every day. And I'm going to tell you. over her head. And I'm going to tell you this. You did an okay job because that girl's off the chain. <laughs> and she's on some different shit. So I, I'll she's give not you that. From, she's not from you. <laughs> yes. Okay? Exactly. Yeah, she, she, don't, she don't play no game. Exactly. Yeah, so I get. So that, that's why I say, like, you know, when I hear men say that about the child support system not fair. Listen, I know. Well, I was on that side. Most, I did it. most of the guys that say stuff like that are the guys that are running drugs and they're in the streets and they have, you know, they, they, they and they got fifty eleven baby moms. Exactly. Those are the guys that really complain about it. Yeah. But, but when you got guys like me in my situation, I'm not super rich, but I'm okay. Thank God I haven't dealt with a woman like that. But there are incidents where women and that I understand. Listen, I'm not saying rare, I'm not but, saying men shouldn't be mad about mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Right. But don't blow it up, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of women are doing the right thing with the money, and they'll tell you, shit, that little money, and I don't want to deduce it down to little money mm -hmm. because every little bit helps, but you ain't doing no bang-up job financially in here. I couldn't, you what know. What about it? Wait, wait, what about all those extra times and once the kids go to sleep and I got to put in a little extra for you? Well, you for come, old times sake. You're up short on the money. You better come <laughs> up long somewhere else. You know what okay. I'm saying? <laughs> right. But, so, yeah, so I just think we need to just get real. Okay. And I think you all made right. a good point in saying a lot of men, not all, mm -hmm. because there are women out there who do that do kind that. of stuff. Mm -hmm. But trust me, I had a conversation about somebody yesterday who said that the mama um, gets a whole host of food stamps and her and the homies is eating good and they want to feed the kids top ramen. Mm -hmm. So, I trust me, I know that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. But... Overall, is it happening? I don't know. But if it is, if it, if I was a man and that was me in that situation, yeah. it wouldn't happen too many times. My child wouldn't be able to come tell me, oh, mama was eating steak and lobster and crab legs, and I had some, and we you know, cocoa puffs. Yeah, right, or some uh, <laughs> chicken top ramen. Nah, that mm -hmm. is going to be some problems. Yeah. You know, but to your other point where you said, that usually comes from a lot of dudes who don't want to be responsible right. at all. Mm -hmm. Most people know, and it's women too, because I know of a man who's getting child support. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it's called paying like you weigh or pay. I'm a coin. Pay on your way. Pay like you lay. Mm -hmm. You laying down with somebody, and you get oops or whatever mm -hmm. that you call the baby. My son is not an oops. No, right. Mm -hmm. That's what you say now. Mm -hmm. You know, but that happens. Chalk it up to the game. Right. I'm be in this thing for 18 years. Let me ante up. I and don't you know what? It's not 18. It's a lifetime. It is, but I'm saying financially, yeah. in most cases, yeah. it's 18, depending on where you're at, 21. My son's 21, and I'm still paying. Yeah, so th that's you chalk it up to the game and say, you know what? I am going to expect to take care of this child for at least 18 years. Minimum. Because the child needs somebody, both parents, to help care for them in every way, shape, and form. Stop blowing shit up, mm -hmm. being mad, because to me, when I see this kind of stuff, a lot of it is, I, I don't want to get to Tom Fuller. It is, but I don't want to discount the fact that there are, because there are women doing mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, gosh, with the hindsight is twenty twenty. It is. It is. You know? And it's rough out there, like I said, but again, fellas, it's like I've, I've said. If, you dig, if you're in a hole, the first thing you need to do is stop digging. Learn from your mistake and 
Yeah, I mean, like, don't, like, have that happen to you once. Right. Once I get it. Twice. Three times. Four times. When it gets, when, when it gets to the third time, you have a problem. Because you have three and four baby mamas out there. The, thir the third and the fourth one is stupid. I'm just going to say that they're stupid for even becoming the third and the fourth baby mama. And but then, who, is the, who are the parents raising these, these, these young men and women bringing in child they can't support? Well, because it's learned behavior. They're probably mm -hmm. learning the same thing. But so that you, because I hear a lot of men say this too. Oh, well, she, she know I got other kids. And well, okay, so the third, the last baby mama, the, the last child, rather, should just go without because you're also paying child support for the other kids. No, they need it too. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a question for you real quick. I'm 19, you're 18. I already have a baby. You know I already have a baby. Yes. Would you date me? At 19 and 18, you mm -hmm. already have a child. See, if I'm, I'm 18, mm -hmm. um, probably not. It's not because you're not an awesome, upstanding no, exactly. dude. But because I'm 18, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do yet. Exactly. The last thing I want to do is be a stepmom. Right. Okay. Let, let's say you're Because 20, I don't know how. You're 24. You got a baby. I got two babies. Would you date me? I'm 24. I got a baby. You got two, two babies. Two different baby mamas. Would you date me? It depends on where we are in our life. Because I don't think a, a person is a bad person for having um, multiple baby mamas per se, mm -hmm. with the exception mm -hmm. of they're taking care of those kids mm -hmm. um, and there's no issues, which is rare. Right. My point of asking you those questions is you got to start thinking about those things before you lay down with somebody. Yeah, oh, yeah the most definitely. You tell me in the season. Thing too. This is a whole different conversation, mm -hmm. but a lot of people aren't honest about right. their situation you know, where they're I got six baby moms. Mm -hmm. You all right with that? Because mm -hmm. I actually was talking to a dude who uh, initially told me that he got three. No, okay, that's told me that he had three kids and led me to believe it was with one woman. Mm -hmm. Later on, throughout the relationship, I find out that he's got five baby mamas and six kids. Yikes! Didn't you think I was gonna find out eventually? Well, by then I would have married you and let me think. That's actually a true story. Wow! Wow! Oh! X! Yikes! No wonder you were out of there in 10 months. I'm just saying, like, how long was you gonna hide these things? I mean, but how'd that make you feel? I pissed off! Why would you be pissed off? I was pissed off because it's like, that's a need to know thing! Yeah, because if you're out there, you might yeah. be, you might have some shit that I need to know about. Yeah, then you know, then you got all these child support issues. Listen, you, now I ain't gonna lie, he wasn't even a good dude. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, he's a douchebag. But, like, you got issues, you can't really take, you know, they get it before you get it. Right. And, and, you know, and I ain't trying to, like, I don't mm -hmm. have a problem with doing for my man, but sure. I'm not gonna take care of you. Why are you taking care of five other kids? And see, that's what I want a lot of these young people, male and female, to think about. If this person already has children, it doesn't make, make them a bad person, but financially, is that person handling their business? And if they're not, and you're with them, don't you think they might be asking you for a little help on that? And if you're the kind of person that wants to help, fine. But if you want to tie yourself down, you got to think about all of this stuff. Thus, at 49 years old, I am by myself. Well, good for you. No. Until, well, <laughs> at least until Amanda gets here. Yeah, we gonna, you, you say that now, nine months, you're going to be like, wow. Well, look, it's been 30 years. Your sister look all that gray. I'm getting gray. I'm, I'm, I'm having a child. No, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Ever. She caught me up. Nope, nope. She locked the legs on me. It was nope. nothing I could do. <laughs> like, like my mama said. Uh, you, you know what? <laughs> you could find another hole. <laughs> I'm just saying, when wisdom talks, you better start listening. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, no, seriously. People, you got to really think about your future, where you're at in it, and... Well, absolutely. I mean, this... Accordingly. Child support should never be the issue that it is mm -hmm. if people are just doing their due diligence to themselves. Mm -hmm. Do due diligence to yourself. That means, all right, and we talk about this all the time. We're going to continue talking about mm -hmm. it because it's an issue. She's got a fat ass law. I have mm -hmm. a law. I'm dreaming about Amanda. She got this long hat. She did. She had. Ooh, I just love that hat. All right, let me put all that to the, on the back burner for a minute. Right. 
as we said, we might come up with a segment, a documentary, whatever. What's behind the booty? Yes. Well, she's a teacher, got her shit together, got her own spot. We're good. What's behind the booty? Because it looks good. Mm -hmm. I'm talking from a man's yeah, point of view, man perspective, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks good. She put together well. Mm -hmm. She smells good. She got all the latest on. And she speaks so sweet. She don't talk loud like me. Mm -hmm. She talks all sweet and nice. And, Mm -hmm. All right, but what you really got going on behind that big ass? Hey, true story. I'm a living. I'm a living example. You I'm, almost got caught. Almost, <laughs> almost, but I didn't. But I didn't. But that's right. a true story. Woman was beautiful, put together, perfect package. Her booty had a fishing line, and she threw yes, it out there. Perfect she, package. She was real to men. No, no, she <laughs> thought she was real to men. I let her get a little bit, enough to where she hung herself. And you got a little bit. Oh, I got a lot. <laughs> but, you know, I let her get out there to where she exposed herself, and I was able to get off that hook and go go my way. Right. So, yeah. you really got to ask yourself things. Yeah, well, what's behind the booty? If I'm women, you know, what's behind all that swag and all that, mm -hmm. you know, he got it going on. He's saying all the right things. Mm -hmm. you know, the digmatization. Digmatizing. He's a rapper. Mm -hmm. I don't know why women <laughs> fall for that. Why do they fall for that? I mean, it could be, a, you know, but I'm saying if you like 40 something years yeah. old, he's still yeah. sitting on mixtapes. Listen, I'm never going to be the one to kill your dreams. Right. But we should be realistic. realistic. However, why are you a 40 something year old rapper with mixtapes and all that? You know, you need to be able to, like, do some other stuff. Like, I can't be on your pipe dreams with you. Right. You know, and, and to me, there's something wrong when you're 49, 50, my age group, and I got friends that are like that, and you're still preying on 21, 23 year old girls. There's something wrong there. I mean,. Because they know a woman, well, you know, there's a lot of dumb women my yeah. age, too, right, you right. know, that they're, 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 they're 21. Yeah, but there are more dumber ones at 21, Right, 18, well, still. because dude, I feel like this, because people say age ain't nothing but a number. It is, though. It is it more is. than a number, because when you're a 40-something-year-old man and you're trying to talk to a 20-year-old, y'all ain't got nothing in common. Nothing in common. only thing you're doing Male, is being a dirty female. old man. Right. You want to soil this poor little girl, but not only are you soiling mm. her body, you're soiling mind. her emotions and mm. her mind. Cause she's not, cause I've seen the the, the um, damage that does to young girls who think they grown. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying young like teenagers, but like 20, 21, yeah, you young. know, uh, 19 even. Mm -hmm. They get in these relationships with these old cats, you know, cause the dude is, Trying to secure the bag. you know, He's got opening the door mm -hmm. and he letting them ride in a nice little leather right. seat. And, mm -hmm. you know, they go on, they there. normally go on to McDonald's, they get to go to Red Lobster. Sizzling. Or whatever, you <laughs> yeah. know. In the bottom of purse from Ross's or TJ right. Maxx or some mm -hmm. shit. So she's, you know, and then finally he gets what he wants. They hang out for a minute and then all that is gone. He's done spending money on her. He ain't got all the goods. And she's left with the emotional baggage of, I thought he loved me. Right. He paid all these mind trips and head games on me. And now I'm stuck right. with all I this I enrolled damage. in school and the tuition's due and he's gone. Right. You know, he did all this stuff. and You know, but the ultimate goal was to get what she had, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I um... I definitely question that when I see older dudes with young girls. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I like looking at the young girls, and you, you know, I'm thinking, you know, you give them their cross like, damn. You talking legal young girls, yeah, like in their young. 20s. When yeah, I talk about 20, them, yeah. yeah. About 18 and above. But you look at them, you're like, damn. But it's like, I look at them as, as a child, still. Well, they are. They, physically, these girls look like women, but they yeah. are children. And I have my daughter's 26. She's actually... Um, a very intelligent and very mature for a 26 yes, year old. Yes, but she looks like she's 15. Right, and you know, that's because she's not trying to be out there, you know, she's like, I got a while before I get off and all, and I'm going to do my thing. Well, you know? we'll find out in September. Uh oh, she, so she finds eBay. eBay. Oh, in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but anyway, uh, uh, re real quick, touch on these uh, black people that are veterans that are not. Uh, for their, their veterans, 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 black veterans, veterans, black veterans, please, if you are a veteran and you've been in the military, whatever, you're a veteran, you know mm -hmm. you're a veteran, go get what's yours. Mm -hmm. The government has money for you. Don't be on the nonsense, well, I don't need it, well, they ain't going to give it to me. I, you know, they get, the people getting thousands of dollars for the stuff that they've endured while they were in the military, Donovan being one of them, you know. Um... Go let them tell you, you that. Don't right. just assume you're not going to get it because A, B, C, and D. Y'all leaving a lot of money on, on the, the table. table. It can make the difference between you buying a house. You can you get your benefits. They give you um, a housing certificate. Yeah. 
to get you a house, a whole host of stuff. Mm -hmm. Go get your money. Stop. Get out of your own way and stop believing, you know, the nonsense about I can't do it or I ain't going to give it to me. Right. And then um, even if you got out under, uh, un, un, uh, other, than honorable, honorable, uh, other than honorable yeah. conditions, look into that because that could be upgraded. That's what I heard. Or, it, you know, there's all kinds of things you could do. Just, just go get your money. Get the information. See you guys again next week. Peace.